We all know home delivery has thrived during the pandemic, but alcohol delivery in particular has skyrocketed. Just ask mini bar delivery, where business is up nearly 140%. The alcohol delivery service just aimed to deal with its very first retail partner, 7-Eleven. And here to talk about it now is Mini Bar Delivery CEO, Lindsay Andrews. Lindsay, good to see you. Before we get into that partnership with 7-Eleven, I just want to talk about the pure numbers you're seeing. I know at the height of the pandemic, you saw a 500% increase in new customers. Talk to me about whether you've been able to retain those customers and what are those numbers like 18 months into the pandemic? Yes, thank you so much for having us. Um, in the height of the pandemic, we saw new buyer growth over 500% as everyone was sheltering in place and they wanted all their food and alcohol delivered to their home so they could stay safe. Um, with vaccinations and the nice weather of the summer, we definitely saw kind of some of those astronomical numbers come a little bit down to earth, but we've seen an uptick in sales more recently with unfor the unfortunate resurgence of the Delta variant. Um, so we're, we've continued to grow and hopefully help people stay safe and stay home with our great liquor store partners so they can deliver the alcohol to everyone's doorstep. So it's interesting, it's sort of so as goes the virus, so goes sales. I mean, did you see that when things were opening up and things seemed a little bit more positive early in the summer, did sales uh, perhaps, perhaps not dip, but maybe come off those highs that you had seen recently? They did. So they were still, you know, way up from 2019, but we did see a little bit of a softening, you know, June, July, August, as the nice weather and the vaccinations and, you know, people had pent up demand. They had been sitting at home cooped up for 15 plus months. So it was natural that they kind of wanted to get out. Um, but we've continued to see really strong growth. Um, most notably, you know, stores still really anxious and excited to get on our platform. Um, we've seen our store network grow by 170% in the past 12 months, which has been really exciting. Um, most notably with the addition of 7-Eleven in the past couple of weeks, which we've been really thrilled with. Yeah, so talk to me a little bit about uh, that partnership and why was 7-Eleven and that branding right for, for um, your company? Yeah, I mean, 7-Eleven obviously is an amazing national and international brand. We are thrilled to partner with them. They sell beer in you know, thousands of their locations. They sell wine in a selection of their locations and they even sell hard liquor in some of their locations in California. Um, so our initial launch with them was about 600 stores in Florida, Texas, and Virginia. And we're really excited to continue to add stores throughout the US. The next states will be New York and California. Um, and it has tons of other benefits for us too. We added a new category for snacks and more. So you can get a Slurpee, you can get ice cream with your you know, um, six pack uh, delivered all to your door in under an hour. Um, also in Texas, where liquor stores are closed on Sundays, 7-Elevens are actually open. So now our consumers in Texas can order beer and snacks and more on Sundays for easy and quick delivery, which has been great. And obviously we were thrilled to work with such an amazing brand like 7-Eleven. Yeah, there's a loophole for you in the, in the state of Texas. Um, talk to me about what is in demand right now. And, and I'm curious sort of what you see trending among alcohol and spirits and has that changed at different points during the pandemic? It has. So, you know, spirits, that category has done extremely well for us in the pandemic. It used to be about 30% of our business, and now it's over 40% of our business um, kind of through the pandemic. So I think people, much like the cooking craze, I think people really got into cocktail making since they can no longer go to a restaurant and have a cocktail made. Um, so I think people were experimenting with that. So we saw um, a great uptick there. And then maybe people got a little tired of making their own cocktails because then we saw ready to drink go up a ton this summer. Um, it was up 145% versus last summer. So I think people, the new cat, it's a newish category, the ready to drink cocktails in a can um, have done really well and have kind of overtaken a lot of the beer category and liquor category. Um, so that's been really interesting to see as it's kind of much like hard seltzer was kind of a brand new category a year or two ago. Right. Seems like the ready yeah. to drink category is that new fun thing people are trying and it's growing extremely fast. Is is wine outpacing beer? I'm always curious about that one. Yes, on our platform, wine 
very much outpaces beer. I think our consumer, we split pretty equally male, female. Um, it's a fairly urban demographic and we do see wine does really well. Um, and it's a item that people replenish um, frequently. Um, so we have seen wine um, it's the vast majority of our sales, um, unlike beer, though with our partnership with 7-Eleven, I think beer is going to you know, start to do and catch up to the wine and spirits soon. Yeah, I think you're right on that one. So look, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the holidays with this Delta variant. Now, what are your expectations for, for holiday sales? Because a lot of those big parties may not be happening. And, and any idea what might be in demand for the holidays? Yeah, so it's interesting. I feel like last December, we had no idea what to expect because a huge part of our December business is holiday parties and corporate parties. Obviously, none of those things were happening last December, so we we're kind of bracing for a softer month, um, but it ended up being huge. Um, I think people were sending tons of gifts. We had launched e-gift cards, which did tremendously well. People sending that to their friends and family or to their coworkers. So we really did see a normal, typical, December in terms of overall orders and sales volume. The one thing that didn't grow as much as in past years was our average order size because in, we instead got lots more orders, but they were smaller since people weren't having parties. Um, so I expect much the same this December. Um, tons of people sending friends and family gifts that maybe they can't see. Corporate customers sending the eat gift cards to their teammates. Maybe they're having Zoom holiday parties. Um, but I do expect, you know, the parties and corporate parties not to be fully back, especially as so many of the big companies have pushed their back to office dates to January 2022. Right. Makes sense. And real quick here, Lindsay, I know that since 2014, you've raised something like $7 million at Mini Bar Delivery. Are you doing another round right now? And uh, are you looking ahead to bringing your company to, to the public market? Um, great question. We are not currently fundraising. We're actually been profitable um, through the pandemic, which is, I feel like, unusual for an early stage startup. We're a very lean, mean team. Um, and while obviously this is one of the biggest IPO years ever, um, we are not currently looking to IPO in the next couple of months, but who knows what the future holds. We're really excited and bullish on this category. All right, we'll come back when you do. CEO Lindsay Andrews of Mini Bar Delivery, or come back even if you don't. It's been a great chat. Thanks so great. much. <laughs>